And now I said, let me show in a figure how far our nature is enlightened or unenlightened. So begins the allegory of the cave from Plato's Republic, a timeless thought experiment illustrating that when we interact with the world, we remain blind to the physical reality of the world itself, and instead experience merely a representation of reality. The allegory of the cave goes as follows. Plato imagines human beings living as prisoners in a cave. They have been chained there their whole lives and know nothing else. They are facing a wall and can only see what is before them, being prevented by their chains from turning around their heads. Behind the prisoners is the entrance of the cave. Over the course of the day various objects pass by the entrance and the daylight causes their shadows to be cast onto the wall which the prisoners face. Over time the prisoners develop terms for the things they see, like ball, tree or car. These shadows are the only things these prisoners have ever experienced and have ever known. They believe that the shadows themselves are what is real, and the shadows are all they understand. By studying the shadows over time they begin to postulate physical laws which govern the shadows. For example, by studying the shadow of a ball bouncing they even discover a two-dimensional version of Newton's laws of motion. One day, one of the prisoners is released and stumbles out of the cave. At first, he is blinded by the sunlight, having never been exposed to it before. Gradually, his eyes adjust to the light. In the process of acclimatizing, he first is most easily able to look at shadows, those beings with which he is already familiar. Later, however, he is able to view objects themselves. As he looks at these three-dimensional objects and looks at the sun, he gradually comes to see that it is a combination of light coming from the sun and the 3D objects which give rise to the shadows. When in the cave he was convinced that what existed were the shadows, he has now discovered a higher form of reality. He has discovered the two-dimensional shadows are in fact a side effect of a three-dimensional reality. In Plato's story, the prisoner who escapes gains wisdom about the true nature of the world. At first he believes that shadows are all that exists, but then learns that shadows are merely two-dimensional representations, brought about by light shining on three-dimensional physical objects. But the story also invites us to take another step backwards in just the same way as the prisoner. We saw in the first video of this series that whenever we interact with physical objects, our sensory experiences, although caused by the physical object, are not the object itself. This is because our experiences are all mediated through our senses, and so are detached from the real physical objects themselves which cause our experiences. Just as the shadows the prisoners experienced on the wall were detached from the 3G objects causing the shadows, so must our experiences of physical objects be detached from the true physical objects themselves. Our senses process data in a very specific way, and the experience we have is necessarily different to that which gave rise to it. Ball, tree, car, are names we give not to objects themselves, but to groups of familiar sensory experiences. They are associated with things out in the real world, but they are not the things themselves. Our senses have evolved to help us to navigate the world, but they cannot reveal to us any direct properties about the world itself. The world itself remains completely unknown to us. Like the prisoner in the cave, we conclude our experiences of physical objects is merely a representation of them and that we are as blind to the reality of these objects as the prisoner is blind to the cause of the shadows on the wall. The fact that we have sophisticated physical laws which seem to govern the objects of our experience does nothing to change this argument. After all, the prisoners in the cave were also able to create laws which govern the shadow experiences they had. Our physical laws are only a means of making future predictions about our sensory experiences and do not directly cast a judgement on physical reality itself outside of our own experience. In the next video in this series of Appearance vs Reality, we will look at Descartes' argument of systematic doubt, the ultimate example of scepticism in the beliefs which we usually take for granted. We can then put forward the case for believing that physical objects, though we cannot directly interact with them, really do exist, and we will start to inquire what it is we actually can know about their nature. In our quest for certainty we must build our knowledge from the ground up. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and check out my Patreon page where there will be exclusive content and you can find more information about what this channel is all about. All the best and stay curious!